This is part two of my Car Wars build guide, and today we're going to focus on the crew cards, uh, both, well, both drivers and gunners for your actual crew, and sidearms that your crew will be able to use, along with gear that your crew can, you know, take advantage of. I'm Chris Steele, and this is Tabletop Game Talk, a show where we talk about all types of tabletop games, in this case, more Car Wars. Uh, and today I'm going to cover the crew cards in detail. We're going to go through each of the different options. Uh, this is all of the current crew cards that are currently available for the game. And let's just see, you know, what can be good, what can be bad. I am not going to, now that I've said that, tell you what is good and what is bad. I'm going to tell you how to evaluate if they're good or bad for what you want to do. And, you know, a lot of these cards, I would say most, the vast majority of the cards are well balanced within their point ranges. So there really are no bad cards. They're just the ability to understand how, to, how and when to use them. So let's get into it. What we're going to do is we're going to take a look at these crew cards here. And, but first what I want to do is cover what are the build rules for crew. And really what that's going to do is allow us to um, evaluate when we might use certain crew and gear depending on our point levels. Now, if you've missed the last episode where I talked about divisions and the dice, you should probably watch that, although the dice I'll cover over and over. But the divisions I may refer to occasionally, just as a quick recap. The division is the number of crew points and armor points. So if I say division three, it's three crew points, three armor points. And the number of build points is the division times four. So that would be 12 in a division three game. So let's take a look at our rules for crew cards. You must have exactly one driver. You must have exactly one gunner. You are always going to have the hand cannon, uh, whether you are, you know, want to use it or not. And you can have any number of other sidearms, but only one of a particular sidearm. And then for gear, you can add as many different gear as you want with a limit of only one per name or one per subtype. Um, there's only two gear cards that actually conflict in that case. We'll cover that in a moment. So those are our rules in general for how you must build your crew. Now I talk about the crew first because I think the crew is actually the more interesting part of the car um, because they are you know, the people in the car and this will help define how you build your car. Now you can do it the other way around. You could build your car and then grab crew that makes it appropriate. But since we have a lot fewer crew cards, it's sometimes easier to start there and then go to the, the build. So let's first talk about drivers, and we'll just get rid of these here. Now, our drivers are going to range from zero to, we have there, to six. So we have, just going to stick those on the screen. We'll cover those four, fives, and sixes in a second. Um, but we have multiple selections for each level. Um, there's at least two, and then the level two drivers, there's three, um, which give you a nice variety here. Now, I will say in the core game, you're only going to get four of any particular driver, um, or you're going to get four drivers. You're going to get a zero, a two, a four, and a six point driver. In the crew expansion, you're going to get a whole bunch more, and then Uncle Al's will give you two of each additional ones. I'm looking at all of them, indiscriminate of what expansion they came from, um, assuming that if you see a driver you like, you'll run out and grab that expansion if you don't already have it. So let's start out with our low point drivers, and I'm going to call those our zero through threes. If we're playing a division three game, which is where you probably should start if you're doing your first build, um, you're going to choose one of these drivers, and that's going to dictate what you can do uh, for the rest of your cards as well. Our rookie driver is just, I don't want to spend any points, give me a driver. He has, he, she, um, unisex, whatever you want to determine here, um, has three durability, and that's really the only thing that's of interest of the card. All our drivers, except for one, have three durability. So this isn't anything special. This is just your standard rookie card. Wingnut is our driver who's actually a gunner. Um, basically, 
he wants to be a gunner, but nobody else wanted to drive, so he gets stuck in here. And as a penalty for being a gunner, um, you can see here, when making a maneuver, add a blue to your driving roll. Now, blue dice are not good for driving rolls. As we can see in the corner here, um, there's a 50% chance that you're going to roll a skid on any driving roll you make. And you're going to make a driving roll anytime you maneuver, anytime you go over a hazard, anytime you go over terrain, you're going to be rolling this die a lot. Wingnut is a terrible driver and is going to be doing a lot of not good control things. But you get to add a yellow die with this driver on any of your attacks, which is the trade-off and why it's a zero point card. It's a really bad penalty, but it's a really good bonus where in a yellow die, on average, your yellow dice are doing almost a point of damage um, per die. It's 0.8 damage on average. But that's fantastic. And that's for sidearms, that's for weapons, for whatever this driver happens to fire. So if you are at a low point game and you just really want to go all out guns, consider wing nut. Not too bad at all. Now, Ghost is the only exception to the durability rule. Um, Ghost has two durability instead of three. And that's because her ability is awesome, especially for one point. When hard braking or hard accelerating, instead of taking tire damage or power plant damage, she can actually just pay a control token and not take that damage. So really good at speeding up and slowing down the car without any penalties. Only one point, but again, um, this is almost the equivalent to taking a, a point of damage to your your crew for right, right off the beginning, except it can you know, never be healed or moved. Now, the next couple we're going to take a look at is a group because they're very similar to each other, um, but they have a point cost difference here. Now, Mamba is a single point. Great. Amateurs, two points. Mamba is going to roll a black die. And if you roll a wrench, you're going to take a control token. If you roll a star, you're going to roll an ace, get an ace token. And if you roll a shield, you're not going to get anything. Now, for one additional point, Amateur just gets a control token and an ace token. Um, so you're going to get both those tokens guaranteed. This is a significant difference. Amateur is much better than Mamba, but one crew point can be a lot, especially when you're in a low point game where three points is a really big deal. Two of your points on Amateur may not be where you want to go, but maybe you have a point that's like, okay, I'll take the risk. Getting that extra control sounds like a good thing. So this is one of the... Um, these you can kind of see the value of this extra point. Randomly get something, always get two things. Now, if we take a look at Rhino, um, we're actually going to take a look at a couple different ones when we look at this. Um, we're going to look at Alpine, and we're going to look at Legend here. Because all of these cards do essentially the same thing. Um, they all, and I just want to make sure that I... That's true. Yes. They all are going to add defense dice. But are they good? So Rhino here, for two points, adds one black die to each of your defense rolls. That seems great. Two points, I get an extra die. But take a look at how often shields come up on a black die. One out of six times. There are times where having that black die is still going to be great, one out of six times is going to be great because you get an extra defense. But if you're out of control and you're not rolling your speed dice, you may still want the black die because you have now have something to spend your ace tokens on. Where if you didn't have anything adding defense, you had no structure, you didn't have rhino or anything like that, and you have a pile of ace tokens but you're out of control, they just go to waste. I still don't know personally whether or not I think this is worth two points. I think I'd probably rather have the control and ace token but again, you can't really, it's, it's hard to argue with an extra die. Now, let's take a look at what three points gets you. Three points, when defending, roll blue dice equal to your speed instead of yellow dice. This card is amazing. It's just amazing. Yellow dice will give you a, sh a shield for your defense about a third of the time. Blue dice will give you a shield half the time. And this is all your speed dice. So if you're going five, you're rolling five dice, 50% chance on each one of them that you're going to get a shield. That's fantastic. Still worth, still five points though. You're not going to be playing this card in a low, um, low point game. And even in high point games, 
you're probably there's there's a lot of things that you can spend five points on if you're not trying to go defensive for some reason um maybe this awesome ability is something that eh, maybe we give that to someone else um because those five points can go a long way as we'll see in a minute and then finally legend add white to each of your defense rolls now black is not great white is not fantastic it's not the best defense but it does have the possibility of rolling two shields on a single side and two out of three times um or two out of six times so a third of the time you're going to roll some defense it's this is again a great die to have as your defense six crew points though is crazy expensive Again, this is going to be a hard choice. Like, well, do I want this or do I want to spend those six points on something else and maybe be able to boost um, some special abilities? So we're going to take a look at all the other cards that you can spend on. But I just want to kind of give you, these are our defensive drivers um, and give you what some things to think about for that. On the other side, this is the rest of our low point crew. Um, these are control drivers, basically. So you take one control or one ace token during the take control step. And after rolling defense, you can spend an ace token to add, you may pay ace tokens to add shields to defense roll on a three for one basis. So if you have three ace tokens, you can just say, I'm going to spend three ace tokens and get an extra point of defense. If you have a lot of, if you have a high ace token build and there's a lot of ways to get ace tokens, this can be awesome because this allows you to turn nine ace tokens into three defense. Maybe those ace tokens, you know, a re-rolling a yellow die three times is on average going to give you one shield. This is just always going to give you one shield for every three dice that you spend. Technically, it's it's you only need two re-rolls to average a yellow shield because that first roll is free, but you get the point. Um, Scorpion, once per maneuver, you may spend two uh, ace tokens to ignore a skid. So this is, um, this kind of goes more towards the, con well, this is the control side where it's like, okay, I just don't want to take skid damage. I don't want to take control damage. This allows you to turn two ace tokens into basically a control token. Um, three points, it's a cool ability. You want to build a card that can take advantage of it. And then finally, Possum. Uh, Possum's probably one of my favorite drivers. When you are out of control, add black to each of your defense rolls, and you may still make slight D0 and D1 maneuvers. Now, the black die we just talked about isn't fantastic in general for defense, but when we look at Rhino, so Rhino always adds the black die. Possum only adds the black die when you're out of control. But the special ability on Possum is actually the thing that's quite good, which is he can still make slight turns, D0 turns, and D1 turns, even when out of control, when typically you can only go straight. Now, if you make a D0 or D1, you still have to make that driving roll, and any shields that come up, you're spending with tire damage because you don't have any control to spend anymore. But just the ability to make slight maneuvers can sometimes save you in those situations. And since you're out of control, this is black die kicks in. And that's really when I want the black die. Having the black die here when I'm not out of control is not doing me as much work as this is when I want to be able to make those rerolls. So I really like Possum. All right, let's take a look at some of the higher point drivers here. Um, we have the veteran. This comes in the core box. Basically, you take two control points, and the the ability on this one is just crazy. You, or you take two ace tokens during the control step, and each time you spend an ace token, you get two rerolls for it. So it not only do you get two ace tokens off the top, you get four rerolls for those two ace tokens. And any other ace tokens you might have, you're getting double rerolls. That's just, it's bonkers good. Bonkers good. Um, that's going to be a new term. Bonkers good. Bandit, once per driving roll, you may reroll any one die. Um, this is actually pretty nice. If I make those D1 maneuvers and I have a green die, I roll a tire, I can basically get rid of the tire damage. Well, reroll and hope to get rid of the tire damage. Um, in general, though, if I had to choose a four-point um, crew, I'm still probably going with Veteran. Ranger, before making a driving roll, choose and remove any one die. Um, this is even better and again it's so these two cards are pretty similar with each other re-roll or remove um for two more points though 
you the re-roll doesn't guarantee you're getting rid of the bad effect. The remove, I don't even have to roll the green die. It's not even going to happen. I never have to roll a white die. Um, so this is actually quite nice. Uh, but again, six points. Six points is, I think that the effect is worth it. But let's take a look at our five-point driver. Um, actually, that was our five-point driver. <laughs> our six-point driver. Before making a driving roll, choose an... Wait a minute. Um, so let's take a rock wolf is before making a driving roll, choose and remove any one die added by a maneuver. And ranger is before making a driving roll, choose any choose and remove any one die. So rock wolf allows you to remove that white die for your D4 turn. Um, ranger allows you to remove black dice for driving over a spike or anything. This allows you to remove any die from your driving roll. Um, and so again, these are a progressive good better, best type of situation. Is it worth those points to spend that? That's what you get to decide here. So those are our drivers. Take a little sip of Diet Coke. My other addiction. <clears throat> Let's take a look at our gunners. Gunners shoot things. Um, they're gonna focus on shooting things. And our rookie gunner doesn't know how to shoot anything just yet. Not not better than our rookie driver anyway. Um, our hound is the driver who gets stuck in the gunner's chair. Um, so hound helps you get take control. You get one control during your take control step. Apparently um, it's a really good side seat driver. But when this gunner attacks, the defender adds yellow to their defense roll. And that's whether they're out of control or not. So they have a one in six chance of doing, well, you have a one or two in six chance of doing one point less damage on any of your attacks with this, as opposed to our... Um, driver who had a essentially four and six chance of doing additional damage. Um, I think the driver is probably better than Hound, but again, it's those zero point choices and trade-offs that you get to make. Um, Hacker is kind of a special case here. Hacker allows you to spend an ace token to reuse a one build point weapon. If this was just to use, to reuse a weapon, this would be crazy good and, and not one point. Um, to reuse a one point build point weapon. The biggest advantage to this is if in small build cars where you may have one build point on the front, one build point on the back for your weapons, um, this allows you to shoot twice forward or shoot twice backward because you can reuse that weapon that's already been used. So that's your main use for this one. Once you get bigger, um, you're probably not going to see this used as much because you're going to put bigger than one build point weapons on your car. But maybe you're not. Maybe you will have a couple one point build point weapons just for that purpose. Whiplash is nice. Typically, your firearms, you can or your sidearms, you can only shoot out of the sides, left or right. Whiplash can shoot forward and backward with the hand cannon. Not with any other sidearm, just with the hand cannon. But considering in small point builds, that three blue dice are actually quite good. And being able to shoot forward and backwards with a weapon that can't be destroyed is also really good. Um, Whiplash's ability can't be underrated, especially at one point. Uh, it essentially says, hey, I could build a completely defensive car and put no weapons on it and have Whiplash and a driver and I'd be good to go because I can shoot in every direction and you can't get rid of those weapons. So now I just have structure. So in a small point um, game, you may really want to use that. Uh, pyro, uh, machete, and I think these are the two main ones. These are the only one, too. All right. So these two are both two points, and this is going to be highly dependent on the weapon build that you wanted to go. If you decide that you want to use fire weapons, pyro is a no-brainer. When this gunner attacks with a fire weapon, roll add a black die. Now, black die for defense, not good. Black die for fire damage or fire weapons is fantastic. If we look up here, we can see 80% of the time we're going to roll damage or special damage. And uh, two-thirds percent of the time we're going to roll that special damage. Pyro basically guarantees that your fire damage is going to be lighting your opponent on fire. That is fantastic. Now, if that wasn't good enough, Machette says add a black die to shred weapons. And we'll talk about shred weapons in uh, part three. But basically, shred weapons all have this a similar ability which is wrenches turn into tire damage black dice roll wrenches you're going to be guaranteed a tire damage or if you do roll 
an actual hit. It's just going to do an extra point of damage. It's only one out of six times that this is going to do nothing. This is really, really good because there's a lot of shred weapons, a lot of them. So if you want to build a shred weapon car, this is your driver or this is your gunner. You just, you want this gunner. It's amazing. Um, for fire, you want pyro. You just do. It's going to make those weapons so much more effective. So now let's look at gunners that add extra damage to you. Um, so here we have window. I'm going to go a little out of point order here. Um, actually, we'll do this one, this one, this one here, um, that there, there, and there. All right. So these are very similar. Three, four, six. Um, at three points, you just get to add a point of damage to whatever weapon you fire. When this gunner attacks, add a point of damage. Awesome. That's that's great. Um, at four points, when this gunner attacks, add a yellow die and a blue die. Now, we know that yellow dice, on average, are going to do 0.8 um, damage. A blue die is going to do an average of 0.5. So if you add this together, you're going to get an average of 1.3-ish uh, um, damage. So where this is one point of damage, this is 1.3 damage. Now, there, the curve on this is nicer because yellow could have the chance of rolling two, but it also has the chance of rolling zero, where this is a guaranteed one. And if we go all the way to six points, which is double the three point here, um, you're just going to straight up add two damage. So these two here, is it worth two points to guarantee that two damage? Probably. Two damage is, is great. I, I think all of these gunners have their place. They all are really, really good. But if you think those are good, let's take a look at the other classification of gunners, which are the ones that add for both crew members. So, and I'm going to keep the others over here just for point comparisons. Uh, we'll just kind of sneak those up here. So what we have here, Vandal adds a blue die to each attack made by your crew. Um, which is half the time going to add an extra point of damage. So it's 50, like, you know, 0.5 damage extra each attack. Um, Max adds a yellow die, which is, again, better. Again, refer to the chart up here. And then Fang adds two blue dice, which is really the equivalent of an extra point of damage for both of your crew members. Now, is that better than Legend, which is adding two points of damage to one attack versus one point of damage to two attacks? Um, maybe. Like, this is really just dependent. Do, do I feel lucky? Do I have a good reroll? Do I have, um, you know, is this better? Or is two points of damage that punches through heavier armor and structure, maybe that's better. But here, I could roll four damage, where this, I could only do two. Tough choices. These cars are very, very balanced. It's just deciding, do I want the constant or do I want the, you know, the chance? Um, same thing here, adding yellow to each of your attacks made by your crew. Uh, this costs a little bit more because, again, yellow is almost a guaranteed point of damage at, at you know, 0.8 on average. Um, and yellow and blue, this is certainly doing more damage on average, but it's for one card versus both. Now, we said that this one here, if we add together, um, we're getting into 0.3. Here, we get like point, um, one, or 1. 1.6. Here's 1.3, 1.6, which is why this costs more. Again, these cards are incredibly balanced. It's just what you like, what what feels better to you. And then these cards are, you know, a blue die to each attack made your crew. For the cost, I actually really like this card. Um, I like this card probably more than this, just because you get to roll more dice and it's cheap. And that extra blue die added to your weapon damage is really nice. And it's all of your attacks. So this adds to your sidearms and whatever other attacks you might have on there. Um, all right. Our final ones here, um, Amateur, this comes in the core box. This is reroll two dice on an attack. Love this card. Love it. Um, it not broken by any sense of the, of the word. It's it's just more fun to, if I roll a bad roll on attack, there's not a lot of ways to reroll dice on attacks except for this. And this allows me to take two misses and maybe make it into two hits. And it's just fun. It's just fun to roll this. On average, a two die reroll is going to be equivalent to adding two dice to the original weapon. So if the weapon is three blues, 
this is going to make the weapon on average equivalent to five blues. So it's going to, in that case, up a point of damage on average. Um, and the reason for that is you're not re-rolling hits, you're only re-rolling misses. So it's a sort of the same of having that extra die. So um, really, really nice card, really fun card to play. Um, so Monarch and Hyperion Monarch, once per attack, when the defender reveals a damage card, you can have them choose a new card. So I really wanted to do tire damage and you drew something that was, or I wanted to destroy your weapon and you drew something that wasn't a weapon card. Well, I know that there's a 50% chance of a weapon card being drawn. So I'm going to have you discard that card, draw a new one. And now there's a three out of five chance that you draw a weapon card. And that's what I want to target. So that gives you a lot of flexibility. Um, it's a little meta in understanding those damage cards. So again, watch the first video so you, you know how the damage cards work. Um, you want to study those damage cards if you're going to use this, this gunner. Um, I'm not sure, it's hard to evaluate the point benefit for these types of special abilities. You just have to play them and see if it's something that you like or not. Maybe that four points is too much for this ability, or maybe this ability wins you the game because you can make sure you're always punching in to the right special damage cards. And finally, um, Hiberian, this gunner may make one additional attack each turn using the hand cannon. That is um, really, really good. Your hand cannon has three blue dice, but there are ways of making the hand cannon better, and we're going to get into that in a moment, and it just occurred to me that I had drivers up there all the time we're really talking about gunners, but yeah, you, you saw. Um, so let's talk about sidearms right now, because um, the hand cannon's not going to apply, or, well, Hyperion's ability isn't going to apply to anything but the hand cannon, but once we get to gear, um, we'll see. And we're going to do sidearms pretty quickly, because they're not as interesting um, simply because they're very well balanced and it's really just the flavor you want, which is going to make one thing better than another. So let's start with the uh, card that comes in the core box and is still one of the better choices for an uh, added sidearm, and that's the assault rifle. And the reason for that is this black die and a wrench that gets turned into damage. There's only one side on that black die that's not going to do damage. This might as well just be hand cannon plus one. Um, it is a great weapon in general, um, but it doesn't combo with anything that says hand cannon, which are two of the gunners. So the next one on here is Killstreak. Killstreak, all of these are sidearms. They are not weapon attacks and they do not have a weapon type. But if what Killstreak did have a weapon type, it'd be a shred weapon as it turns wrenches into tire damage. Remember, blue and yellow have no tire damage, as you can see up here, um, but white does have a pretty good chance of doing tire damage. And when you have a white die with special, you take a look over here, you're basically averaging a one on this. So kill streak gives you a yellow, a blue, and guaranteed one with an upper limit of four damage um, on this. It's, it's really quite nice, especially if you're going for a kill the tire build. If you're not going for the kill the tire build though, the assault rifle is probably still more consistent. Um, we also have our grenades, and this is our, if this had a type, it would be fire type. Um, it would literally say fire, but it's not. Um, and again, the black die here means that you're going to set something on fire pretty consistently. Uh, four out of six sides, you're going to set fire. And the red die also has two, or has one side with fire. So with a special on it. So this particular grenade is almost always going to set the target on fire. Fire can't be blocked by defense. It's just going to get lit. And from that point on, until they spend two control, they're just going to keep taking a point of damage. Now, a couple drawbacks to this. One, it is a range two. So it's still out of the side and you still have to be within a, um, a turn key away. Remember, anytime you see range on these cards, it's talking in car lengths. Um, so you still have to be within one turn key from your target car in order to use this. But if that's the case, great. If it's not, you still have your hand cannon, which is always there regardless of what other um, sidearms that you have. Now, let's say you want to go for an explosive build. This here is not as guaranteed to get explosive damage, but with two sides on yellow and one side, or two sides on white and one side on red, it's not that hard to get the explosive damage. It's also range two. Now, explosive damage can be 
at very best, it's called, it's situational. It can be great if you your opponent only has one control left because this attack will take away that last control and then your next attack can get through their defenses. They don't get any speed um, dice for defense. However, if they have multiple control, that explosion is still going to take away control for that first damage and the only this the left the rest of the damage is going to get through if they have no control though this damage will turn into regular damage so this is very very situational however because it's a sidearm and because it's reusable it is probably one of the best explosive damaged damage weapons out there um it's just really really good because it can be reused and because it does have a really good chance of causing that explosion damage to happen. And if your target didn't have a control or only one control, you would just use your hand cannon. You don't have to use this because this one's always available. A um, couple others, we have our bug zapper. This would be considered if a weapon type would be a laser weapon. And the reason um, laser weapons reduce the number of ranged rerolls to your opponent. So here, it depend, and your opponent has to be three car lengths away before they even get a single reroll. Um, and it has a very, very, very slight chance of doing fire damage because there's one in six chance that the red die could come up with a fire damage. Um, but it's going to do two damage almost all the time uh, consistently. And probably three, uh, the average on red and yellow. So if you add damage together, um, and honestly, you should figure in fire damage as well. So you're going to add this together. 1.3 is our average on a red and a yellow. So that's 2.3 damage on average. So two or three damage is what you can look for there. With no range rerolls, it even increases that chance. Now, there's two other cards here that are um, kind of special. The first one's gonna be from Uncle Al's. This one I really, really like is just an added sidearm. Uh, essentially what this does is if this is your first attack, your next attack against the same target is going to do an additional point of damage. This doesn't even have to do any damage to add one damage to the next attack. This helps you punch through those heavily armored um, cars because if you need, or heavily defended cars, you know, they have a lot of defensive dice because this gets you that extra point of damage to punch through. And it doesn't apply to sidearms. Uh, it only applies to actual car weapon attacks on your second roll, but otherwise it's a really fun and interesting weapon. And the last one is the paint grenade. And the paint grenade essentially is going to um, add a paint status effect to the car. And what the paint status effect does is make their ability to attack from that side more difficult. It's the only card that has the paintbrush symbol on it, which is kind of fun. Um, and if there's already a paint status card there, then they're going to uh, just take damage. Now, the odds of getting that paint status is pretty decent because you have your green and your red. So if we look at special damage here, green and red is a 50% chance on average, you're gonna roll a wrench every other turn. Now, again, these are averages, the bell curves on this, the statistical probabilities are very different depending on the dice combinations. But if you just think in averages, you're gonna get pretty close to um, what's actually gonna happen on the table without overcomplicating things. All right, now let's take a look at the most fun and that's the gear cards. And this is how you're gonna really combo things into uh, making your crew really stand out here. So our first one is the Steady Aim Gimbal. This one says you may reroll two dice when attacking with a sidearm. Well, that's a sidearm. And Hyperion lets us use the sidearm twice, or the hand cannon twice. And we also, if we remember, we have Whiplash, which allows us to fire our hand cannon in any direction. So now we can fire the hand cannon with two, re two ranged rerolls, or two extra rerolls. Now, if we couple that with the sight, when attacking with a sidearm at blue, if your target's within two car lengths, suddenly we have a four blue hand cannon with two rerolls that can be shot from the forward or back arc as, long, as well as the size, or just an extra shot from either side. These combos start making these cards much better, especially Whiplash where we can just target in any direction. Um, those are really the best ones for doing your uh, 
you kind of you're making your sidearms best. Now these both apply to sidearms. These both apply to the hand cannon. Now if you didn't care about this, you could put any other driver and any other sidearm, and these things would still apply. So keep that in mind. Now for driving, we have driving gloves and driving boots. Um, and both of them are going to make your drivers better. Once per maneuver, uh, once per driving roll, you may pay an ace token to re-roll a yellow die. So anytime you have to roll a yellow die, you can you roll a shield, um, roll it again, and you have a pretty good chance of not coming up with a with the shield slash skid again. And then your driving gloves, when making a D1 turn, instead of using a green die, you can use a yellow die. Now that doesn't apply to D2 or more, those go back to the regular dice, but this allows you to make the, that first level of turn with no risk to your tires. Um, again, both of these are just one point and that's amazing. Um, the goggles, I like the goggles once per attack. If your target is provided any shields from cover, you may pay one ace to add one to the attack. So essentially this allows you to shoot through uh, partial cover. And remember, other cars are partial cover. Now you would not choose this in a game that doesn't have, you know, if it's only one versus one in an open arena, this doesn't do anything at all. But if you have an arena with a lot of partial cover or you have multiple cars running around, this could actually do you some pretty, um, do you pretty good. I still don't think I would take it if it was just a bunch of cars running around though, because why not just shoot the car closest to you? Unless you're doing a team thing where you need to shoot through one of your, um, shoot, shoot, shoot through your teammate to hit your target. Um, and then we have a, a few cards that help you stay alive. Now, this is the only two cards that actually you have to choose one of them because they both have a subtype of vest. Um, all other ones are just gear with, with no subtype or the subtype doesn't have anything that competes against it. Uh, so these ones you have to choose. The choice is very simple. You don't choose the plated vest. Uh, the plated vest is when on foot, add blue to your defense roll. There are only scenarios where you might want to get out of the car and in those scenarios you may want to take this because typically your defense out of, on foot is two blue dice this would make it three blue dice you still don't want to be outside the car you're going to get run over uh, but if you are playing a scenario where you want to get out of the car the plated vest is nice in that situation um this one here when crew members each crew member can take an additional point of damage just boom i have a flak jacket first aid at the start of the round i can remove two damage off of one of my crew members um, and then this is used, so it doesn't get to be continued use. And then the taco, taco's great. Um, as long as both of your crew members are still alive, you can move one damage from one crew member to the other at the start of a round. And you can do this. This does not go away. Apparently you have like the 12 pack of tacos. Um, but so you can use this quite often, but it doesn't get rid of damage. It just moves it around. However, if you combine these, I'm going to move this to another crew member so that I can... Now that crew member has two damage on it, and then I use the first aid kit to repair them. Um, that combos pretty well. So those are all our gear cars. Those are all our sidearms. Those are all our drivers. Um, and again, should change the heading there. Um, so that concludes part two. Um, and I went really, really in depth with crew. I'm probably gonna go even more in depth when we get to the uh, build, build points for building your car. And that's why we have three separate videos, so you don't have to watch them all at once. But until then, um, keep playing Car Wars and blowing stuff up with your sidearms.